this is a real treat because I've only ever seen the underside of this car now it's built from about eight inches lying on one of those trolley boards but to have it up here gives me the kind of view I want just amazing compared to what this car looked like when it came off the farm is just extraordinary it's all brand spanking new gorgeous all the new plates on here and looking this way up through the frame and the engine whereas before you probably remember there were some buckles that were back here and the frame was actually the wrong color and it was rusty just looks amazing absolutely gorgeous now the reason it's up on this jack is because there's a very important job to do what's that I'm glad you asked. It's called spannering up. Basically, all I've got to do is run round all the nuts and bolts that are only accessible from underneath to make sure they're all fully tight. And you start with a half inch spanner and then work your way up. Bear with me, this could take a while. Sorted now, guess what I need next? No. No? Yes, thank you. All these have already been greased when they were assembled, but it's just a matter of checking they are full. And you just keep squirting away until you can actually see the grease just come out. Like so. It's a high melting point grease and it needs doing about every two and a half thousand miles, so it's a bit of regular maintenance. And I tell you what, it's a lot easier using an air powered one than one of those squeezy jobs. <laughs> because it's running a bit rough, I just want to check the timing. So I'm using a strobe. Now, the strobe is connected via this lead to cylinder one to the spark plug, and these two just connect it straight to the battery. And when you switch it on to flash, and you light up here, and by the way, if you have problems with strobe lights, don't watch this. But you can see the timing mark on the pulley here, the white mark. Now, at the moment, it's way off to the right, if you like, but this is set on zero. So if I increase this while looking at it, I can work out how many degrees before top dead center it's firing. That's two degrees, three, four, five. Now, at five, the white line is lining up with the straight edge of the marker here on the sump. So I know that's firing at five degrees before top dead center, which is exactly right. So the rough running is not due to the timing. It's got to be something to do with the carburetors. So I'll get the car down and sort that out. That's it for part one. After the break, I'll be sorting out the airflow into the carburetors, valeting it, cleaning it, polishing it, all that kind of stuff. And I'll be putting on the sticker kit. Yes, this car has transfers. See you later. What are you doing, Mark? 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 What? What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't blow down my ear like that! It'll hurt my eardrum. What I'm trying to do yeah. is to make sure they've got the same amount of air going through each of these carburetor inlets, right? Right. Piece of tube and you hear this kind of whistling sound. So what you get is a kind of... Uh, 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 they don't sound... They don't sound the same. I find this impossibly difficult. I used to have a Spitfire with twins and snare me through that. Yeah, that's yeah, my meter. So what do you do? Just plug it in. Push it in the, uh, the trumpet. See what the reading is. That's five kilograms per hour. Don't you like modern science? It's about twelve. And that's about nine. So that was the lowest. Yeah. What should I set it at? They've all got to be the same, but is there a set number of kilograms per hour that should go through each other? No, not really. You just want to get an equal balance between all three um, and obviously get the idle speed right at the same time. Okay.
looks more like it. Now I can just put the connector on here between the air filter box and the carbs, and then we can start cleaning it. Hooray! Hooray! Welcome to the valeting department. We can do stuff here for dry hair, greasy hair, dandruff. Yes, we've got it all here. The job in hand is basically to clean this car up. Now, of course, it has already been mopped over and polished when it came out of the spray shop, but we've been working on it, assembling it for quite a long time, and there are bound to be lots of little scratches in the paintwork. So what we're going to do is use a machine polish with the mop all over the car to bring it up really, really nicely before putting a hand glaze on to finish it off and really bring up the shine. But before we can do that, we need to blow off all the dust and then wash it. But it's the dust first. Like so! Dust and grit blown away. Now for a quick wipe down with a clean, damp cloth. Next, some masking tape to protect the rubber seals and also the chrome edging. And now, a bit of machine polishing. This is the machine polish. And this is the machine. I do enjoy this job, but I've got the whole of the car to do, so while I crack on with that, you take a look at Ian Forrest's top 10 racing classics. I'll see you back when I've finished. Yeah.